the first day in a foreign country is always an interesting experience. And, you know, the origin of the term Super Genki comes from Japan. Super means super, Genki means energy or charisma. And I had a very Super Genki experience my first day in Japan. So in today's video, I'm just going to take you through the experience a little bit. So before I even got to Japan, I was actually awake for around 17 hours. I was staying at my parents' house, but we didn't have a bed for me to sleep on. So I was sleeping on the couch. Unfortunately, the couch that we had wasn't very inviting. And when I was sleeping there, the nerves just hit me and I was unable to close my eyes the whole day prior up until around 6.30 a.m. in the morning when I was scheduled to leave to Japan at around 8 a.m. that day. Not 8 a.m., probably 9 a.m. I got to MIA, which is the International Airport in Miami, and I do my check-in, everything is fine. And I'll never forget this because it was the best flying experience I've ever had in my life. It's an airline called JAL. And if you're planning to fly to Japan, I highly recommend that you look into flying with JAL because the experience that they offer is well worth the extra money. I've taken multiple airline companies to Japan before, but the most memorable one and the most enjoyable one by far is JAL Airlines. And something that was really cool when I was on JL is because I had this like script of something I wanted to say to Japanese people in Japan. I wanted to tell them who I was about. So I wrote this stuff up in Japanese and there was a guy behind me that was Japanese on the JL airline. This has never happened before in another airline, but he, he was this young, in his 20s, this young guy. And I said, hey, could you help me practice in Japanese? And he said, sure. And we got talking and go figure this guy has been like traveling around the world. He's like a Japanese heart surgeon. He's like 24 years old. He's studying to be like a psychologist. And on the airplane, it was just so much fun because we were just talking for hours. He like he got really drunk on like one beer. And I, I wasn't drinking at the time because I was underage. But... It was just a really great experience. And the food is bomb on JL too. I'm just not, not sponsored by JL, but that was my favorite flight experience ever. So I highly recommend you look into them. First plane ride over there was about how many, how many um, hours? I think it was about 17 from Miami. And when I landed on Kicks, I got in my line, but I didn't fill out my internet, my form to immigrate to Japan because I wasn't aware of this so by halfway into the line i realized i needed this form i was talking to this old guy prior in english about coming to japan and i said hey i have to go back to the line because i forgot this card so i go to the back of the line i get my card fill it out i get into the country just fine and then i go to the ticket counter now with me what i have is i have my big luggage bag I have my passport bag and I have my guitar, I think it was, right? So I have a couple of bags with me. I go over to the ticket counter, the JR ticket counter to buy a train ticket. And I buy my train ticket one way. I put my bags down. I'm just like taking in everything. I pick my bags up. I go over to the train ticket booth and I put my ticket into the machine, but the machine eats my ticket, which was very strange. I didn't, I didn't know any better. So I just was like, oh, I ate my ticket. That's okay. I go down to the train station and in about 10 minutes, the next train's coming, but I see the old guy again. So I start talking to him again and we're talking about going and being in Kyoto. He is um, traveling to meet some friends in Japan. And I'm going to meet my friend to stay with her the night because I don't have anywhere else to stay currently. I haven't checked into my dorm or anything. So I go and as I get on the train and I put my big luggage bag on the counter, I realize, oh my wow, I forgot my passport bag. So there's now like 80 kilograms, not 80 kilograms, it's too much. 
But this really heavy pickup like bag fills all my clothes and stuff. I just take it, I swing it off the shelf, and I run back to the ticket counter. I see that my bag is still there, so I thank God for that. But I look at the girl, and my face is really stressed out, and I just say, uh, Densha. And she understands enough to understand that I missed my train. So the girl, God bless her soul, she got up in her high heels and she ran with me to the ticket booth. She ran with me to the, the, the ticket machine, right? She opened the ticket machine, got my ticket for me, and sent me on my way. It was absolutely hilarious. But then when I got downstairs, um, the Wi-Fi in Japan is not, not very user-friendly. And all the Wi-Fi is like SoftBank. It require passwords, right? And my phone didn't have... My phone didn't have data so i couldn't contact my friend that i was meeting in kyoto station and i was kind of freaking out i was trying to use like the payphone to call her but i didn't understand how to do it so i ended up asking this this cute japanese girl i was like hey can i use your phone and she says okay so i call my friend but she's not picking up and i'm i'm, I'm like okay you know what i just have to calm my nerves right so i go on to the next train it's a regular line i start talking to this german guy and i'm like you know man yeah everything is all cool having a good time over here in Japan and just to calm my nerves I want to speak in English right so what happens is that the girl actually comes from three train cards down holding her phone saying hey your friend called do you want to call her back and she saved my day man oh that girl was a scholar and a saint um I was like yeah sure so I, I call my friend and I talked to her it's all good the girl gets off a couple of stations before Kyoto Station, but I remember looking at her through the window. Ah, oh, dude, man, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have the foresight to ask her for her number, but I mean, missed opportunities. I get to Kyoto Station, and it's it's a giant experience. It's really big in my mind, and but I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on eating and sleeping because I haven't done any, any of those in a while. I meet my friend Emiko, and the um, the first meal that we had together in Japan. The first meal I had in Japan, period, was unagi, which is really strange because recently I've been having a craving for unagi. And that day, I went back to her house and I slept, I instant knocked out. And I woke up the next morning to hearing her telling me stories that I was like talking to myself. I was like sleep talking to myself on the phone. I was crawling like a zombie on the floor. And she was making like kariage in the morning, and there's just some really cool pictures. I'm just, that these are the pictures that were outside her place, and that was my induction to Japan. And I think that it's awesome to be able to have that personal experience. So honestly speaking, if you're traveling to Japan or traveling to any country, I think it's a good idea to want to be a little situated with your surroundings and not forget your passport because it definitely could have gone a lot. It could have gone in the wrong direction. You know, my whole experience, it was fun, but only because it worked out, you know. And I think that when you're traveling to any foreign country, and Japan included, you should be aware of your surroundings to some degree. Not everything has to be a movie experience, right? <laughs> because movies don't always end up as good experiences, right? Or they don't always have a happy ending, you know what I mean? So just be careful. When you're traveling but that was my first day in japan it was very fun very exciting a really grand way to kick off the experience and yeah i hope you all enjoyed listening to this video i'm going to be making a bunch of videos talking about my beginning experiences in this country but just stay tuned we're going to talk about a lot of different topics um, and I'm really excited for it because I love Japan and I really want to get back to loving this country more, even though I'm not in it right now. So that's the video for today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.